Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to the second channel. Your scary stories, your personal scary stories that you guys send to me and I read them out loud and react to them in a video. Thank you guys so much for your recent support. I feel like you guys were so nice that I took kind of a break from this channel. And then when I re-uploaded that video did really... That video did really well. So much engagement for the amount of subscribers that this channel has. And I think we hit 10,000. Not quite. We're at 9,880 subscribers on this channel right now. So I bet you with this video, we can we can get there. I bet we'll hit 10,000 here in the next couple days. So yay, thank you guys so much. I have nothing else to say. As always, if you want to submit your own stories, directions are always in the description box right below this video. And let's read some stories. Let's get right into it. This first story says, hi, Hannah. I don't know if this story will fit the bill like others you've shared. It's more gross and uncomfortable than anything. Content warning. Content warning. Thank you so much for the content warning. I appreciate it so that I'm not like reading the story and then like, oh crap, I got to do a trigger warning. A uh, content warning for a uh and adult content is mentioned, but it's not graphic. Okay. Thank you very much. I recently had my mom come to me asking to help me fix her Facebook reels. She said that her reel suddenly started showing her really strange things. I took a look and it was in summary borderline corn you guys know what that is uh that's code uh posted by women children doing things that should be mundane like dancing but you could tell something was off as well as very random videos in hebrew of women doing things like crying it made no sense for her to be seeing this her scope of the internet is very limited because she isn't that into social media so it didn't make any sense at all i checked her previous logins in her privacy settings to be sure her account wasn't compromised everything was normal i googled the problem and all i found was a reddit thread where someone else was asking why this was happening to them they said that they were 15 to make a point as in hey i'm a minor why is this happening to me the best i could do was use the function where you can ask to see less on individual videos. It didn't help at first. I checked her Instagram too because Meta also owns that and didn't show any of the signs of what was happening on her Facebook. The reels over on Instagram were normal, which was confusing to me because I thought since the two apps must share data, especially because she linked her Facebook account to it and the reels would be exactly the same on either app. I ended up telling her to just use Instagram reels instead because I didn't think it would get better. But a few days later, she told me it cleared up like nothing had ever happened. I don't think it sounds much at first if you also spend too much time online like me and know how gross the internet can be. But believe me, the content was really freaky. It was teetering on the edge of what you can get away with on any social media app. And if this happened to my mom entirely by accident, who was on Facebook that seek these videos out willingly? It was like peering into a much darker part of the site that made me wonder about how other platforms handle this kind of thing and why my mom. She just wants to look at crafts and recipes in peace. And that was from Anonymous. Thank you, Anonymous, for bringing that up. I actually have a lot of thoughts on that because I have some insight into what could be happening. It's not happy insight. By the way, I'm petting Winnie. She's over. She's always here. She's home when I'm filming. She's just always like, okay, well, you're hands free. So you must be petting me. So that's why my arm is moving over here. You can't see her. So I have a lot of thoughts on this, actually. First of all, I bet it's as easy as your mom watching one video. Like maybe she just watched one reel of a woman in another country dancing or belly dancing, for example, like totally innocent, totally fine video to watch. That's completely hypothetical. But then the algorithm is going to think that because she watched that one video, she would like this other type of video. This happens to me too. It's like I get sucked into one rage bait or one like weird Instagram reel. You know how there's a lot of reels on Instagram that literally make no sense? Like it's just somebody cutting into this object, obviously on the street in a different country. And the object is like a weird fruit that nobody's ever heard of. And the video is just a few seconds and that's it. And there's literally nothing to it. I could see like maybe she just clicked on one of those videos either by accident or was just like curious and watched one innocent video and then, you know, the algorithm 
has a mind of its own and took off and gave her all these other weird videos. What you're describing to me sounds a lot like something I have also ran into on YouTube. Huge trigger warning, you guys, for what I'm about to talk about. That's why I haven't talked about it publicly before, because it's a very terrible thing. It's basically CP, if you know, I can't say it, but you know what that is. Um, it's uh, CP, bad material involving children that is basically disguised as something innocent when it's really not at all. So the way that you described it is that I took a look and it was borderline corn posted by women and it was children doing things that should be mundane like dancing, but you could tell that something was off. It sounds vague, but I know actually exactly what you're talking about. So like I said, so big trigger warning for what I'm about to describe, please skip to the next story if you have CPTSD or if you don't wanna hear terrible things involving C CP. Okay. So on YouTube, somebody actually emailed me these accounts to like tip me off to them that I hoping I would make a video, but I really could not possibly, I couldn't make a video on it. It was just so unbelievably triggering and fucked up. And I just felt it should be reported, not made into a video. It wouldn't be bad to make it into the video to spread awareness and get it mass reported. But there were these channels on YouTube that were, um, this is so, I'm sorry, I can't even, it's hard for me to even explain what's going on because I saw some of these videos and clips of them and it almost made me puke just seeing these clips. It was, again, dancing or like gymnastics videos of really young girls, like prepubescent, and they were always um, stretching and they were stretching, but they were, oh God, but there were people like helping them stretch and then the children in turn looked very unhappy in the videos, like they were being hurt, like it hurt. Undoubtedly, without a doubt, 100%, that was aimed at people with very nefarious and disgusting intentions. I have gone through and reported these accounts. I think at one point I did tell patrons like, hey, this is super triggering, but if you can go and report these accounts, if you're not triggered by it, um, then please go and report these accounts. And I haven't looked at them since, honestly, because they make me so fucking sick. And it's like often stuff in different countries. It's often young girls in different countries and it's clearly being videoed in different countries. And I also did report it to the child the, uh, sorry, the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. I did put the links, I did send them the links to it as well. So hopefully they look into it as well, but I'm just not sure if there's much they could do if it's on YouTube, f videos from a different country. Hopefully they took it down. I need to look, but I like block it out of my brain because it's so horrible. So all that to say, the other weird one is that I did a video on this long ago when I was a baby YouTuber of those weird videos from like, I think Cambodia of like these weird voyeuristic videos of like, they'd always be titled like, man hugs woman or like man sees woman on a motorcycle and completely nonsensical and then them just like hugging and kissing but everybody's clothed like it's all family friendly but it was obviously aimed for countries where uh pornography is illegal there are some countries where it looking at pornography is completely against the law. And so on YouTube, they like get around it by like showing these erotic videos that are technically family friendly so that people can watch those instead. It's very strange. And then these videos were like, seems a lot like that, except 10 billion times worse because it involves tiny children. So that's what I think this probably is, is something similar to that, where it's like to the average person, they would just be like, uh, what the hell is this? And just scroll by. And she probably hopefully fixed her algorithm where I know on Instagram, if I'm seeing weird reels, like those weird videos I don't want to see, I will like pointedly go click on other reels, like cooking videos and other things I'm interested in, cooking and lifestyle and cleaning videos and stuff, because then it'll like the algorithm will revamp my feed with stuff that I want to see. But I'm just curious to know if this was one of those cases because I would bet my money that it was. So 
Okay. All right, let's move on to story number two. This story says, Hi, Hannah. I'm a massive fan of your channel and wanted to share this story with you. I hope you enjoy it. When I was 13, my family and I went on vacation to a house in Long Beach Island, New York, with my family friends. It was me, my older brother, mom, and our family friends. Our family friends consisted of Audra, her two sons, Tino and Ari, and then Jen and her two sons, Carlisle, I think is how you pronounce that, Carlisle and Max. The house had two floors near the beach, and we all slept upstairs during the evenings. Sometimes I would share a room with my mom and brother while everyone else occupied the other rooms. Other times, my friends... And I would stay up and sleep in the living room. During the day, though, I remember this baby pink room with two twin beds and white frilly drapes. Honestly, that sounds adorable. Total vibe. This room was so distinct to me because I always did a double take every time I walked past. Out of my periphery was this shadow in the middle of the room by the window next to the twin beds. When I looked back, there was nothing there. I brushed it off as seeing things until one night. I talked with my mother about what I had been seeing in the pink room. My mom looked at me carefully and told me she had also been seeing the shadow in the room. I quickly told my friends about it and it became like a game. We'd take turns walking past the pink room, trying to find the shadow out of the corner of our eyes. No one ever was able to see it, but every time I walked past that room, I could see it just out of the corner of my eye, standing there in the middle of the room. It would be standing there even when I wasn't looking for it. It got to a point where I walked past it one day, did my double take, and Max yelled at me that there was nothing there. He sounded scared and I told him I couldn't help what I was seeing. Audra got upset with my mom and told her that I needed to stop scaring the other kids. That ended the ghost talk in the house and the rest of the vacation continued as normal. We rode bikes along the water, ate ice cream by the beach, and would play on my Game Boy Advance at night. However, the shadow still stood in the room the entire time and I wasn't allowed to talk about it. To this day, I question if what I saw was an optical illusion or a real encounter with the shadow person. Hope you enjoy. And that was from Nick. Thanks, Nick. That is really bizarre. That's what I was kind of wondering was if was it an optical illusion? Like, was it something reflecting off the walls in the room or was it just some object in the room that was creating a shadow or something like that but you'd think that when you stopped and actually went in the room and like looked at it you'd think you'd be able to figure out what it was that you were seeing you know what I mean but yeah interesting that your mom saw it too good short and sweet story okay this third story says hi Hannah love 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 your channel and your live laugh the bottomy sign <laughs> shout out to the sign I love these spoopy stories and have debated sending one of my many since the first episode my anxiety has held me back until now but thanks to you I have gained the courage to send at least this one yay thank you for still sending it I know it can be scary I get it but if it helps like even if you're not anonymous if you don't comment on the video like nobody really knows who you are so don't worry my name is ash she her i know it's a gender neutral name back in 2009 my girlfriend and i decided we were bored and wanted to go on a mini adventure her family had told us about zombie road i had never heard anything about it but i was down for some fun i charged my digital camera i didn't have the fancy smartphone back then it was 2009 i don't think i did either that was like right when like only like some people had them. People still had flip phones. I still had a flip phone or I had, I think I had like one of the ones with the little keyboards. Like you could type, like you didn't have to use the numbers to text, but I definitely did not have a smartphone. I charged my digital camera. I didn't have a fancy smartphone back then and put fresh batteries in the flashlights. We picked up my younger cousin and we embarked on the not too long drive from her home. I had no idea what to expect, but it was said to be haunted. Apparently it's a whole trail, so this should should be easy, right? No, not so much. I've had my fair share of encounters with the paranormal, but I definitely didn't expect what was about to unfold. We spotted the trail and parked the car with the only plan of action being to walk the trail and see what happens. We no sooner step out of the car and turn on the flashlights and they all go dead. No. Oh my gosh. 
While that was alarming, I still wanted to proceed and try to take pictures with the camera to see if we could spot anything, an orb, a premonition, anything. That was also a no-go. I turned on the camera and it also drained almost right before my eyes. Now I'm thoroughly freaked out and we haven't even started the trail. The flashlight's all going out? Hell no. Hell no. I would have been out of there. My skeptical ass would have been out of there. At this point, I nope out and we all gather back in the car. Still spooked, but not wanting to waste the trip, we decided to just drive around the neighborhood where the trail is. At least the car still works, right? The houses themselves even creeped me out. They weren't new buildings by any means, but some of the houses seemed uninhabited. And there were very funny cars that we saw in driveways. A few with lights on that have very little or no furniture at all. I thought that was strange, but maybe there was an explanation for it. One house we drove by, I couldn't stop staring at as we crept by, but I was also frozen with fear as I stared. I couldn't shake the feeling and I swore I saw a head on one of the balconies. I told my girlfriend to get us out of there quickly because I couldn't take the anxiety of it anymore. On the way out of the neighborhood, there was a church. It was the dead of night, but the parking lot was full. There were windows that were either boarded up or had the blinds drawn, yet there was a light beaming from around the edges. That place was packed full. That was enough for us, and we never returned to try again. This may not be the spookiest thing, but in the moment, and even now, the overwhelming fear was extraordinary. I also found out that there was a documentary made about the place called Children of the Grave. It's not a giant production or anything, but I found it a good watch after visiting there myself. Apparently, there used to be an asylum and or orphanage there that had some really shady practices and a lot of kids did not survive. There's been photos and sightings of ghost children in the trees and on the bridge. To this day, you can no longer go at night because they have security guards in the area due to the crazy things happening, including people going missing and satanic rituals being held. Part of me is a little disappointed I missed out on walking the trail, but the bigger part of me is very relieved that I didn't go because knowing me, I would have been paralyzed in fear or ran and hurt my clumsy self trying to get away. Anyway, that's all for this one. Thank you for taking the time to read this. Even if it's just to yourself, it is truly a privilege. Thank you for the work you do. Keep it up, Ash. Thank you, Ash. Children of the Grave. I'm going to Google Children of the Grave documentary horror from 2007. Interesting. IMDB says Children of the Grave uncovers the shocking truth, history, and haunting of ghost children, poltergeist kids, haunted orphanages, and crybaby bridges through the untold stories of unmarked graves. It doesn't have great reviews, but I low key really want to watch that. So creepy. I would go to somewhere like that if it was daytime. I will tell you, I think I would explore if it was daytime. I don't know if I could do outside in a very notoriously haunted place at night. Just feels like poking the dragon. You know what I mean? Okay, we're going to move right along. This is story four for today. So this one starts, hello, Hannah. My name is Jason, they, them pronouns, and I love your content and the way you approach these kinds of topics and remembered an interesting story from my childhood while watching subscriber stories three. When I was in elementary school, probably around six or eight years old, seven or eight years old, wow, I lived in a different part of my town. The road I lived on was effectively on the property line of the local graveyard. My backyard practically shared a fence line with it, and my bedroom was unfortunately on the side of the house closest to the fence. Anyway, I remember one evening I had woken up with such a sense of dread, one that kids just normally don't feel. You feel... And I saw a figure in my room near the doorway. I can't recall much about their appearance. It was dark and it was years ago, but they were there and they saw me. We both just kind of stared at each other before they had walked out of my bedroom. And for some reason, I followed. I'm sure I was just attempting to find my way to my parents' room, but the figure went that way too. I don't remember if my parents had woken up or if I had simply tried to wake them up before returning to my room, but the figure was there throughout the whole ordeal, stood 
by the doorway to my parents' room as if patiently waiting for me. It only vanished whenever I was just about to doze back off in whichever bed I'd crawled into. That was the only instance of actually seeing the figure in that house. Probably a year later, we moved to my current house. Same city, probably a few miles from the cemetery. But... Nothing too exciting happened until my teen years, when I distinctively remembered once again waking up one evening with that same sense of dread when I was around 13. Dizzy head, pounding heart and chest, the feeling of suffocation. Sure enough, there that figure was, staring down at me in my own bed, a hell of a lot closer than they had ever gotten prior. Again, it was hard to see them, but there were some features I could make out. They had really clear pale skin that was discolored, corpse-like with little warmth and a notable blue slash purple hue, and they seemed preserved, Like they had clearly been dead, but there was no signs of decay or zombification, just clean, a wreath, a wreath roll. Once again, we both just kind of stared at one another. And once again, they had sat there until I began to doze off again. I said that word wrong. Ethereal, ethereal, not a wreath roll. Ethereal. Please do put that in Taylor because people get really mad when I mispronounce shit. Over the years since, I have never seen them again, but there have been a few haunting experiences in my home. Pets suddenly look towards doorways and corners as if someone was there, sudden breezes and chills that couldn't be described by drafts, feelings like there have been eyes on me, actually feeling a hand on my shoulder when nobody else was in the room, and even a fairly recent time when a family member woke up with their hair tied to the metal post of their bed frame. I'm not sure who or what has decided to follow me throughout this whole ordeal, though I suspect it was thanks to my naive child self following the entity slash spirit, but nothing has ever been threatening or aggressive, just there lingering. But either way, that's my scary story, accidentally making some sort of alliance with something of the supernatural nature. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jason. I love what you said about the pets looking towards doorways. It just reminded me, my dog did that the other night. Listen, I know my place, like even if ghosts are real, my place is not haunted. I have had absolutely no issues in this place. But Winnie was on my bed the other night and I'm like watching TV. Like that's what I'm doing. I'm watching TV, playing mobile games. That's what I do every night before I go to sleep. And Winnie's on the bed and she just gets up and starts barking at the bathroom. Like just looking towards the bathroom and just like, ferociously barking and there was nothing like there was no um object out of place like sometimes she'll see an object that wasn't there before and the shadow freaks her out and she thinks it's a monster just barking at nothing I had to get up and turn the lights on to make sure that there was nothing there because she freaked me out so much because she doesn't do that like I always know when there's something there that she's barking at you know like I always know that she's like seen something that she didn't know was there before and so she starts barking at it and that kind of stuff freaks me out Anyway, all that to say is that's a super creepy story. It does seem like something has maybe attached itself to you. If you are a believer, I wonder if you could ever do some sort of little ritual or something that could maybe like a separation spell or something or like find a spiritual guide who can maybe help you see if they can like detach you from that. I don't know if that's possible or anything. The way you described it also made it sound like not a mimic, but kind of like somebody that was like, I don't know, like a duplication of yourself or something. I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass. Very creepy. Okay. This is story five for today. Hi, Hannah. First, I want to thank you for your channel as it is my top favorites. Oh, thank you so much. I have been following your videos for almost three years now. Oh my God. Thank you so much. That's like since I was a baby YouTuber. I would be honored and very happy if you shared my true story in the future. And if you have any questions about it after you read them, I'm happy to tell you. I will share this experience because it is one of the more intense experiences I have had. And if you would like to hear the other ones in the future, I'm happy to send them to you as well. Lastly, I want to say that I always look for rational explanations and I don't just believe in anything I see or experience immediately, e.g. pipelines, faulty electrical connections in the home, etc. But in this following experience, it has no logical explanations. 
I do appreciate that, though. I appreciate that you're looking for possible explanations. I left some illustrations attached to this email to give you a layout of the experiences. This experience happened at my uncle's house back in 2001. A little backstory to give more clarity about my experiences. I grew up in San Francisco, and after I graduated high school, I decided to move to a small town where my dad's family lives. This town was three hours south of San Francisco and about a 60,000 person population. It was a nice change to a big city I had for 14 years. When I finally moved to Mer- Merced. 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 When I finally moved to Merced, I went over to my uncle's house and asked if I could speak to him briefly. He said, sure. He then motioned to the little table next to the kitchen to sit down and talk. I asked him if I could live with him and auntie for a while as I attended community college, adding that I didn't like living alone in a new town I just moved to. He replied, I think that will be fine. I told him how thankful I was and that if he needed me to help out in anything around the house to let me know. I then left to get my things and in a few hours I came back and only brought with me things I needed, clothes, books, toothbrush, and some CDs. Immediately, I felt a vibe that someone else was in the home knowing that it was only my uncle and me at the time. It was a feeling of when you go to a friend's house for a party and there were people walking around. It wasn't necessarily a bad feeling, but it got my attention. One day I saw my uncle doing beadwork at the table, listening to a radio talk show. I asked if I could sit with him and listen. He said, sure, come and sit. I told him that I wanted to tell him something I had experienced when I moved into his house the first day, and I hope he didn't think I was weird. He said, go ahead, tell me. And I told him my feeling of there being a vibe of other people in the house when there was only me and him in the house at the time when I moved in. He said, you know, I'll tell you this. All the years that I lived here, I have had some experiences that I couldn't explain, and they didn't scare me much, but I noticed them. I replied, tell me one thing that's happened. He replied, one night I was watching the History Channel and I was by myself in the house. It was close to 9 p.m. at night and your auntie wasn't home yet from her late shift at the hospital. I was in my recliner and behind me in the kitchen, I heard the drawers and cabinets. I go to turn on the kitchen lights and a few of the drawers and cabinets were open all the way. So I believe you. I don't think that you are strange. A few months later, I had my own experience. When my experience happened, I was the only one in the home as my uncle and my auntie were out for a while. My cousin, my uncle's daughter, was away attending her first year at university. So I was given her room to stay in when I moved in. I was walking down the hallway leading to this room one night and it was pitch black as it usually is. This being my uncle's house was far out in the country and the last house on the block next to a field and barely any street lights to shine inward. I turned to the right down the hallway to a room and each night I had to pull the long string tied to the ceiling fan to turn on the light bulb. The ceiling fan was in the middle of the room. I was feeling around in the dark for the string and then suddenly I see something darker than my pitch black room come towards me. This caught me by surprise, and at the same time, I couldn't see out of my left eye and felt physically being pushed out of the room. When I was able to see out of my left eye again, I found myself outside of the bathroom. I just couldn't believe it. I was shocked, and I didn't understand what happened. It was so strange. When I looked at how far I was pushed out of the room from where the ceiling fan is to where I found myself outside of the bathroom, it was about eight feet. I was a little scared, but mostly shocked at the impossibility of what just happened. At the same time, I am happy I got to experience it because it taught me that impossible things can happen. All the best, Apple. Thank you, Apple. App. Appel, I hopefully I'm saying your name right, um, for submitting your story. That is really, really creepy, especially because your uncle like corroborated that he has also experienced stuff in that house. But again, I'm just like, at least it's nothing like too like it's really scary, but at least like nothing bad happens. You know what I mean? And it is rare that you hear about a story of like cupboards and drawers in the kitchen or whatever opening. But that is how I imagine again, if ghosts are real, let's like hypothetically say they are, that is more of how I imagine it happening. Like if they were able to move things, that it would uh, move just a couple things and then stop. Not like in all the TikTok videos where like the entire kitchen blows up with everything 
bouncing out at once. You know what I mean? I do appreciate that, like, the way that you described things. Like, if ghosts are real, that's how I picture ghosts being. Like, them acting more like this. Like, more subtle. Still scary, but not, like, outrageous. The way, like, TikTok portrays them. So, okay. As usual, we're reading six stories today. This is our last story for today. Hi, Hannah. First of all, you make some really cool videos. I've seen so many interesting things on your channel. (laughs) Thank you so much. Now, I watched volume two of your scary stories. And earlier that day, I had been telling a friend about the exact thing that happened to me. So I figured why not send it in as a submission? You can call me a, I use they, them pronouns. This happened years ago. I don't remember when exactly, but I think I was about 16 or 17. The house I've grown up in is a flat on the first floor of a building. All flats have balconies and there have been multiple times through the years where someone has tried or even managed to break into somebody's house. However, in my experience, this usually happens when people aren't home. The average burglar doesn't want to run into someone and will often escape if they realize someone was home. One day, it was late afternoon, and I was home alone, and I was chilling in my room, and it had started to get a little dark outside, but I hadn't turned the lights on yet. At one point, I started hearing a sound like something scraping against wood coming from the next room. Oh my god. It went on for a bit, and I decided to go check it out, not knowing what it could be. As soon as I turned on the lights in that room, the noise stopped abruptly. Oh, 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 that would freak me out. That sounds like something from The Conjuring. Oh, I don't like it. Okay. Now the window of this room could be open to step out onto the balcony. There were ceiling to floor curtains, so I couldn't see outside. However, hearing the noise stop made me realize that someone might be trying to force the window open. For some reason that I can't quite explain, I decide to step through the room, blindly push one hand between the curtains and reach for the handle of the window. I do that and hear noises like footsteps on the balcony. Oh my gosh. I can understand the instinct to just do it because you're like gaslighting yourself and telling yourself that this isn't real and that there's nobody there. So you just like put a hand and you're just like, hello, you know, just trying to figure it out and don't even bother with safety when you're just like, nah, it can't be anything, right? At this point, I'm pretty scared. I run to the kitchen and grab the first knife I found. Not the best idea, maybe, but I was a teen and ready to fight if needed. I then go back, take a deep breath and step out on the balcony. There's no one there, of course. After a moment, I take the knife back to the kitchen, go back to my room with all the lights on and figure I had probably scared the burglar away. (laughs) You thought there was a burglar on your balcony and you just like, when you scared it away, you just, (laughs) I'm sorry. That's just wild to me because I would be peeing my pants, running outside and calling 911 and you are just way braver than I am. My dad came home a little after and I said nothing at all about what had happened because I didn't want him to worry. To this day, my parents have no idea that ever happened. I'll probably never tell them either. What I know is that my neighbor, who was away at the time, came back and reported someone had broken into his house and stolen something. I don't know if it happened before or after they tried it at my place. Maybe it would have been best if I had called the police, but from previous experience, I knew that calling the police after getting thieves is useless, or at least it is where I live. Okay, that explains it because I was like, I guess if it happens pretty frequently in the neighborhood, I get that too but I'm just like and then that's just confirmation that somebody was trying to break in like yo you are really brave (laughs) home alone I would have been on the phone with the cops and my mommy and I would have been crying oh my god that was my scary story and in case you were wondering how did I manage to sleep that night or feel safe while home alone after (laughs) I don't know I just did I got the scare of my life but since nothing bad actually happened I guess I just managed to brush it off fast thank you for reading this if you are and have a wonderful day (laughs) thank you so much I'm sorry but that is making me laugh so hard that you were just like meh It's probably fine. Just make sure the window's locked. Oh, I would have lost my shit. Oh, man. I would have been so scared. That is so funny. Sorry, it's not funny. That's terrible that that happened to you. It's funny that I can't imagine reacting like that. I know there are people like you out there, though, that are just chill and are just like, 
it's probably fine. They're just, you know, like I get it. It's a personality type. I am just not one of those people. I am too high strung. I'm unhinged. I would be like holding on to my dog and getting ready to run and stuff like that. But I like it. It says a lot that I, the first instinct I have would be like, I'd be running out of the house and calling the police. And the first instinct you had was to go downstairs and get a knife. Like, that just tells you about how our personalities are. So I love it. Okay, friends, that's going to be it for this scary stories video. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I will see you all in the next one. Okay, bye.